Yeah, this is a confined animal feeding operation, which is what we need to do to feed all these dairy cows because they're lactating and they need tons of calories. I mean, they're like as much calories as an athletic runner to produce all the milk that we require to suck out of their bodies. So this is a um, area that they try to get out of the mud, but they truck in alfalfa. And I, th I actually saw alfalfa hay on the other side. So alfalfa is a high nutrient rich, protein rich feed that they can only grow in the warm Central Valley. So that's trucked in here. That's more carbon emissions, by the way. You got to factor into your carbon accounting to uh, feed the cows. So they all come here and concentrate to feed on alfalfa hay in your national seashore. Does that provide a good argument for them to say, well, you should allow us to grow more alfalfa here then, if you don't want us to truck it in? And you can't grow alfalfa here because it is it needs heat. It grows best in the Central Valley, Sacramento Valley, San Joaquin Valley. So they wouldn't be able to even grow alfalfa here. But that's why they grow silage. The silage meadows, which you can see over there mode, is cool season European plants like mustard, radish, wheat, barley, field pea. So they do all of the above. They grow rich feed hay silage for the, the dairy cows, and then they truck in more hay. The silage and the grazing isn't enough to feed these animals? It's not enough. This little uh, annual grass here, I mean, we can come down and look at it. This again is what these cows are trying to make a living at. The, these are probably um, introduced European brome grasses. And again, we'll pull up the roots and that's it. That's the extent of the root. Now, remember that big reed grass, that Pacific reed grass bunch? Yep. We couldn't pull that up, but this is, this is the extent of the carbon. And I don't see any of those mosses and lichens. These are all little weedy yep. um, European forbs, but look at this soil. There's just nothing there. It, it's compacted. There's nothing growing on it. And this is not a diverse little micro habitat with all the soil crusts. So this is just not enough to feed these 1,500 pound dairy cows. It's, they need more. But is this at least a native plant? No, this is a weed. So it's not enough and it's not native. Correct. So this is a double negative, right? Double negative. And we even have a triple negative in that we have this plant right here. There's different plants in here, but this is the beginnings of the poison hemlock. This is a noxious weed from Europe that is inedible to cows, but it's starting to come up. It'll get um, six feet tall by the end of the spring, but this is not edible and it's a noxious weed, but this is what they're adapted to in Europe. See this cow track? This has compressed the soil. It's not spongy and look how big that is. And the seeds of these are designed to come in here and sprout and disturb soil. That's just how they adapted in Europe over yeah. hundreds of years. Thank you. you. You got exactly what my next question was. So in these papers that I was just reading, they mention that bare degraded soil like this actually acts as a seed bed for weeds. Right. And I'm like, okay, but why does that work for weeds and not for native plants? The native plants often have like a completely different seed for one thing. The native grasses may have a, a very long, big seed that's designed to catch on animal hair and then drill into a crevice in that biological soil crust every once in a while, rarely. But these um, weeds from Europe often have very s tiny seeds that are, they're adapted to bare soil. They're actually adapted to um, this kind of harsh, disturbed environment that's almost like a, a biological desert. I mean, we can even see little sprouts down here next to this cow track. They're very aggressive. These introduced weeds, this is a noxious weed, the poison hemlock. They're actually adapted to disturbance. And our native grasses are not adapted to disturbance. It's the difference between an old growth forest and a weedy, um, clear-cut forest that has weeds invading it. It's exactly the same. Okay, so I'm looking at this and I do see some sprouts. 
what you're telling me is that none of this is native. This is all weeds that are pushing through this type of ground. Right. These are little tiny weed seeds that are just getting a foothold in this biological desert. We don't see mosses. We don't see lichens. And here's this compressed, hard cow track. Look how big that cow track is that comes and over and over again. This is a cow trail next to the feedlot. And you can see they've chiseled into the soil. They've compressed the soil. There's no moss. There's no delicate lichens. There's no bunch grasses. There's just these weeds, little seeds, pioneering into this disturbed soil. That shows just how uh, tough and, uh, well, I guess advantageous these plants are, that this thing's already trying to take root, where obviously cattle have walked through somewhat recently. Exactly. These European weedy annuals are adapted to cows and disturbed soils over the course of, you know, a couple thousand years of agriculture in Europe. But our native elk and our native seeds, our wildflowers, our coastal prairies, it's like a slower system. It's like an old growth grassland that's not used to this level of disturbance. It's used to Native American cultural burning. There used to be burning here, but that's a completely different process than trampling, grazing, and compacting soil. Not only did we bring livestock that this land is... You're telling me that not only did the cattle and the livestock originate from Europe, but the plants that had adapted to life with that livestock came with them and now they've both been unleashed on land that isn't ready for either of them. Exactly. And they're both trying to take over this land. Exactly. This is a, a complete conversion of one old growth grassland to a weedy pioneering grassland with the cattle that provide this disturbance. But our native coastal prairies are not adapted to this level of churning of the soil and just getting rid of the biological soil crust. There's no soil crust here whatsoever. All right, Laura, you are telling me with confidence that there isn't a single native species here next to this uh, cattle pasture. No, these are all European species, weeds that the cows do eat, but they're not native. What is the green in these puddles in this mess over here? This is a, a mud-filled mess with cattle manure, and so there is so much manure here that these are blooms of algae. And this is completely different from uh, biological soil crust. This is a water quality problem. A bloom of algae means there's a fecal coliform level here that's causing algae to actually feed off of the manure. So this is a, indicates you don't want to drink that. This is a health hazard because of an algal bloom. Does anything want to drink that? Nothing would want to drink that and be healthy. And so I even feel sorry for the cows having to live in this kind of um, hazardous conditions. What happens to ocean life when this finally makes its way down to the shore? That's a very good point because this contaminated water that has a very high bacterial level will eventually find its way down these gullies and there's um, a lagoon right there and that's the Pacific Ocean, especially when we had a, a rainstorm last night that then washes more of this filth basically and polluted water into our blue Pacific Ocean. Oh, there's a mustard. You want to see the mustard? Because that's what's at your foothill zone. That would be fine. This is um, European mustard, which is actually a part of the silage. This is pretty rich in protein and nutritious. Um, it's like a forb from Europe. But it escapes from the fields and comes out here into these pastures. And look how much fuel when it dries out. This is a, a fully mature mustard plant escape from the silage fields and when it dries out it just creates this mass of fuel so this is a weed and if we restored our native coastal prairie you can tell we'd have much less of this dry flashy fuel
You don't need cattle grazing or sheep grazing to get rid of this. You need to restore native perennial bunch grasses. So if we look over here, down in the distance, that's silage fields. So this plant you're holding in your hand has managed to make its way over to here. Yeah, you can see the yellow patches, the mustard kind of coming up right now in those distant golf course fields. Oh yeah. But the seeds have come all the way over here. So this is the mustard that's used to feed the dairy cows. And this is how big it gets when they harvest it. This is where birds would be nesting when they harvest the silage when it's still green. But here it's just an escaped weed. The park's not managing it. The park should have a, a weed management plan and get rid of all this. But yeah, this is definitely fuel. This is a lot of fire fuel here. So it's, and this is because of cattle. This is caused by cattle. This is uh, not something that we can prevent with cattle.